Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo, civil rights activist and founder of the Me Too movement, Tarana Burke, spoke at Smith College last week. Nice. In other news... Would you like to travel back in time without the risks? Amherst College's Maneski Museum of Natural History is a local treasure where you can do just that. Take a step into the museum to experience dramatic fossils, extraordinary dinosaur footprints, and geological specimens that tell the history of our local landscape over time, and dazzling mineral specimens from all over the universe. The museum is one of the largest in New England with over 1,700 specimens on display. Your visit will challenge you to consider problems of scientific interpretation, and since it's free of charge to enter, we went down to Amherst to check it out for ourselves. We have probably close to 40,000 people visit the museum each year. They range in age from 5 to 105. One of the purposes of the museum is community outreach programming that encourages families and students to come into the museum and use it as kind of a, a learning space, an educational space. We have about 200,000 specimens in the Greater Museum and we display about 1,700 pieces. Most of the collection was collected by people associated with the college, you know, faculty members, students, alumni. Um, one of my favorite pieces in the museum is actually the collection of dinosaur trackways. And the reason they're important to me is the dinosaur trackways were collected within maybe half an hour of here by car. We really house one of the large collection of dinosaur trackways that's ever been collected, and given the local nature of them and you know the interest that people have, that's been my favorite part of the collection since you know, actually since I was a little kid. I mean, the whole intent of a good part of the museum was to help people understand the local geology from the time before Pangaea formed, through the period of the formation of Pangaea, which means when mountains were being built, to a time when the whole of Pangaea began to split apart. Um, creating the, the valley at that time. I'm a student here at Amherst College. I'm a senior and I'm studying environmental studies, but I also work at the Bineski Museum part-time as a student docent. I have two favorite exhibits. I really like upstairs the Pioneer Valley Geology exhibit because I think it's really interesting to learn what this area looked like 10,000 years ago or 10 million or 100 million. It just puts a lot of stuff in perspective. I also really like the Pleistocene megafauna, the really big mastodons and saber-toothed cats. They seem familiar from movies and it's cool to see them up close. Let's take a look at some of the impressive exhibits that this museum has to offer. have here are drawers that are filled, I mean literally filled with fossils. This one for example has basically cartilage fish and as I pull it out what I'm trying to show you these are shark's teeth. Um, there's a megalodon tooth right here, another megalodon tooth here and this particular piece is part of the backbone of a megalodon. Each drawer is populated with you know an incredible array of fossils so as you get a chance to look through them you get a sense of how vertebrates evolved over time. Very cool. Right now what we're looking at is a painting of the Connecticut River Valley some 200 million years ago. So in the cases that are lo located below the painting, we have fossils that indicate really what's going on. So everything from what you see here is a lava flow that was occurring to a lake that was forming to mountains that were rising. These were the mountains that rose at the time that the plates were being pulled apart. The lake is where the water collected. The lava flow that's here is actually Mount Tom and the Holyoke Range today, which is really kind of cool. Well, what we're looking at now is a painting of the Connecticut River Valley today, albeit without houses, cars, um, so they've been stripped from the painting so that the painting could represent kind of what it would look like were it to be a natural environment. So what you see in the painting that's here is you'll see the mountains that are in the foreground, that would be the Mount Tom, the Holyoke Range. This is what we see today. This is where we find the rocks and the fossils that help us to understand what happened some 200 million years ago in our valley. Some of those rocks are actually located right in front of me. In, in this particular rock we have some Granby basaltic tuff or Holyoke basalt or Hitchcock Volcanics. All of these are rocks that would have been part of the rifting of the valley when the magma would have flowed up onto the surface as lava, cooled very quickly and became these kinds of rocks. And we look further down and we go back further in time to rocks that are metamorphic, rocks that have gone through a mountain building process, which would have been when Pangaea was forming. So we have Pangaea forming, we have the rift occurring, and as we look further we can find rocks that are related to some of the more glacial events. But it's a really a wonderful painting. This is an example of a tra trackway that was found pretty darn close to Northampton, Massachusetts. It helps us to understand what was going on in the Connecticut River Valley some 200 million years ago. Beautiful mud that was just laid out there, was perfectly flat, just, you know, just 
perfect. You know, just had come off a stream deposition, some nice silt, and it was sitting there. It was beginning to dry out a little bit, and then all of a sudden, literally out of nowhere, there's this loud crack of thunder, just like boom, and then the rain comes pelting down and going, hitting the mud, going, and as it hits the mud, it begins to form these craters. And not only do we know that the craters are being formed by the rain, but the rain is actually has a direction to it. It's not only coming down, but it's coming at an angle, suggesting the wind was blowing in this direction, the rain was coming down, and it was doing that. All the while that was happening, some little critter was in his cave and looked out and said, hey, I'm going to go here for a little walk, and started walking through the mud, kind of dragging his tail behind him as he moved off into the distance. Had it kept raining, all of this would have been washed away, but it didn't. The rain had to stop very quickly. And it stopped quickly, the clouds parted, it got really hot, you can just imagine it's steamy, and all of a sudden the water's evaporating, it kind of like tss, as it evaporates off the mud, dries it out, there's a little bit of a coating of some kind of a slime, because it's that slimy mud, and that slime dies. Wow, what a breathtaking museum. But don't take my word for it, it's free of charge and open Tuesday through Sunday. Go on your own field trip to find out. Thanks for watching. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye.